Tonight, 100 cats in Shawnee are in need of homes. And a local Shawnee museum is helping out to fight hunger. This is News 30. Welcome to this week's edition of News 30. I'm Jake Nelson. And I'm Lindsay Skinner. As technology increases, new information about Mars continues to fascinate astronomers. Last week, NASA revealed their findings from the MAVIN mission, a mission to discover the history of the atmosphere on Mars. Their findings revealed that solar wind could have removed carbon dioxide from the once warm and wet planet at a rate of 100 grams per second. Investigators said they believe the rate could have been much higher in the past. With Starbucks receiving major backlash over their red cups, Dunkin' Donuts is stepping in the Christmas cup war. Dunkin' Donuts released their brand new holiday cup, which is a little more festive. People are talking to Twitter and saying what one prefer, which one they prefer, excuse me. Haters are gonna hate and players are gonna play. Last month, an R&B singer named Jesse Braham filed a lawsuit against Taylor Swift for $42 million. Braham claimed that Taylor Swift plagiarized lyrics in her hit song, Shake It Off, from his 2013 song, Haters Gonna Hate. The lawsuit was dismissed Tuesday by Judge Gail Standish. Standish is a U.S. district attorney in California. To support her, her ruling, Standish listed other popular songs with similar lyrics. In conclusion, Standish stated that, at present, the court is not saying that Braham can never take his case back to court, and that, at least for the moment, defendants have shaken off this lawsuit. Arizona has dropped Planned Parenthood from a list of organizations funded by donations from state employees. The list is part of a state employee charitable organization. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey is the chairman of the organization. According to his spokesman, Daniel Scarpinato, the decision to drop Planned Parenthood was made by the organization's executive policy committee. The committee consists of appointees handpicked by Ducey. They took Planned Parenthood off the list after deciding that the organization was, quote, too controversial for their list of charities. Ducey has supported the committee's decision. Planned Parenthood is Arizona's largest abortion provider. The decision to drop it has angered supporters and plan, plan, Planned Parenthood, excuse me, including its spokeswoman, Jody Leggett, who called the decision a political one. Scarpinato has denied that the decision was affected by the governor's personal stance toward abortion. Two customers have filed a lawsuit against Chipotle Mexican Grill after they became ill with E. coli. A total of 41 customers have contracted E. coli since eating in the Chipotle restaurants in Oregon and Washington State. Chipotle hasn't released any comments about the incidents, but have voluntarily closed all 43 restaurants in those states. If you know someone who cannot survive without their favorite fizzy drink, they may be at risk. A recent Swedish study suggests men who drink two or three glasses of soda a day are at a 23% greater likelihood to suffer from heart failure. According to the study, soda contributed to 3,600 cases of heart failure over the course of 12 years. Elevated blood pressure, high blood sugar, weight gain, and diabetes were also common side effects to avid soda drinkers. Retailers from surrounding areas are boycotting going to work this Thanksgiving. Hmm. More than two dozen major retailers announced they're closing up shop Thanksgiving Day and giving employees the day off. How about that? Huh. This boycott has even created a Facebook to promote not shopping on Thanksgiving to support, support excuse me, their boycott. TJ Maxx will stay closed this Thanksgiving as well as GameStop and REI. Hmm. 
REI does not plan on opening its doors for Black Friday as well. This is one of the boldest stands of the holiday season. Hmm, interesting. Coming up, we've got information on what to do if your car is recalled. And Hannah Lounsbury has a story for all you cat lovers out there. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 30. 100 cats in Shawnee currently need a home. Here's Hannah Lounsbury with the story. On this property, you could have 100 cattle. But thanks to this city ordinance, you can't have 100 cats, leaving one Shawnee homeowner and her pets in need of some assistance. We met with Shawnee City Attorney Mary Ann Carnes and asked about the ordinance. If the animals have been altered, that is that they've been spayed or they've been neutered, then you can have six over four months of age. So you could have six cats and some kittens till the kittens turn four months. There's noise, there's health issues, um, there's um, animals loose and digging in people's gardens and all those kinds of things. Um, we are set uh, to return for an appearance on the 19th, which is, what, a week, I guess. Um, they have asked for a continuance until the 30th of November, and I've indicated I don't oppose that, and, and the judge will grant that based on our joint motion. So I'd say it looks like they'll be back on the 30th of November for a report with the court. Homeowner Kilty Reeves is doing her best to find homes for her cats before that deadline. Well, we, we, we know we put in calls to all the uh, organizations, SPAR, and, but everyone's filled up right now. You know, I guess there's just abundance of cats that need homes. Many of the cats are likely to be euthanized if they aren't adopted by people like this woman, who came looking for a cat to replace one that she lost. They're just really loving. They want to kiss on you and stuff. They're not like aloof. There you go. If you want to adopt one of these adorable animals, you can call Greg Wilson at 405-275-9994. This is Hannah Lounsbury reporting for News 30. There is much controversy about the 15-minute phone call costs for prisoners. The Federal Communications Commission announced on October 22nd that a 15-minute phone call will now cost $1.65. This is 40% lower than the $3 rate that was previously in place. In a statement released by, released, excuse me, by the FCC, Commissioner Mignon Clyburn, he said that high telephone rates affect 3 million children across the country each year. Families pay what equates to a $500 monthly phone bill to stay in touch with loved ones who are incarcerated. The Oklahoma Department of Corrections generated $3 million last year from inmate phone calls. News 30 will keep you posted on further comments. Right now, Oklahoma has a 23% skills gap between our current and future workforce that our state will need by the year 2020 in order to fill 88,000 job openings. And so we know that looking out towards the year 2025 that 77% of all of our jobs will require more than high school and so we're trying to encourage people to get more education and to be able to move into the top industries in our state. As of a 2011 census report only 33% of Oklahoma's workers have a college degree. In order to help fill the gap, Oklahoma will need to raise that amount by 31% as 64% of jobs will require a post-secondary education. Because of this problem, state leaders took action last month to get people talking. I'm here at the Heart of Oklahoma Expo Center where Governor Mary Fallon is meeting with business leaders in one of nine key economic network regional meetings in support of the Oklahoma Works Initiative here in Shawnee. those in the education community, those in the business community, our different social service agencies, our different employment agencies, workforce boards, together to have collaboration and conversation about how we can create jobs, opportunity, and make sure that our work skills align with that. Well, I think one of the things that we've discovered is that sometimes um, business people don't talk to educators and educators don't talk to business people, and so they don't really understand the needs and challenges that each has. David Hewton, Dean of the Paul Dickinson College of Business at OBU, said he understands this issue and the importance of communication between the two groups. Well, I think uh, one challenge that educators often have is that, uh, like most people, we're busy doing our jobs, but we need to do that next step of actually connecting with industry 
to make sure that the things we're giving our students today is what industry is going to need uh, tomorrow. But if you start to look at the heart of the problem, it really begins before college. Right now, Oklahoma ranks 42nd in elementary math proficiency and 45th in middle school math. In high school math, Oklahoma ranks 38th. By the time they get to college, 40% of students have to take remedial courses due to lack of proficiency. The facts of this uh, study are very alarming. Of the 50,220 students who entered kindergarten in 2000, only 39,082 graduated from high school in the spring of 2012. The shortage of teachers and these statistics, it is obvious that Oklahoma has a lot of work to do in order to get ready for the year 2020. I'm Nicole Smith, News 30. November 11th was Veterans Day. The city of New Orleans put on a parade to honor America's veterans, and businesses across the country gave free food and services to their local heroes. Pottawatomie County held several banquets where over 80 Oklahoma veterans were honored for their service. The Marine Corps turned 240 years old this Tuesday. The Marine Corps was established on November 10th, 1775. One of the most memorable acts of the Marine Corps was the leading the Battle of the Mariana Islands, which liberated Guam from the Japanese occupation in 1944. The historic date was celebrated by veterans and active service members with a ceremony and cake cutting at the Hyatt Regency Guam. Recently, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issued a recall on Takata airbags. This recall is said to affect nearly 19 million makes and models in the United States, including BMW, Honda, Ford, and Toyota. If your vehicle has been affected by this recall, then you should visit your dealership as soon as possible. You can also see the full list of recalls at safecar.gov. Emma Patton has your weather forecast. And learn what the Maybe Gear Museum is doing to help fight hunger. Stay with us. Here's Emma Patton with this week's weather update. Thanks, Jake. Well, hopefully you're still standing after all of that wind we had yesterday. Some of those gusts were up to 42 miles per hour. Luckily, today was a little less windy and a little bit more breezy. Let's take a look at those current conditions. It's 51 degrees out there, nice and chilly, but with barely any wind. The breeze from the north-northwest is only 2 miles per hour, so it still feels like 51. It's a really beautiful clear night and the sun went down at 5.23 p.m. today and the sun will be back up again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Yesterday, forest fires raged across the northeastern part of the state, affecting much of Bartlesville and the surrounding towns in Washington County. The fires near Bartlesville jumped roads and became several miles long as the Oklahoma Forestry Services Task Force fought to keep the flames at bay. Much of the state has been fighting fires again today, but the winds have significantly decreased in severity. As we move into the next few days, make sure you're paying attention to fire danger. Today and tomorrow, there will be a moderate risk for forest fires. If you're going camping or building a bonfire, make sure that you're taking any necessary precautions to stay safe. Other than that, the next few days look like a good weekend to go camping or spend some time outside. Tomorrow morning, it will start off in the 40s, but it will work its way up all the way to a sunny 66. Again, almost no wind tomorrow, but the winds will be back up to 10 miles per hour on Saturday and 11 miles per hour on Sunday. Temperatures will continue to drop after Friday, so it will be 63 on Saturday and a whopping 55 degrees on Sunday. Definitely a jacket for that day. Fortunately, those temperatures are going to come back up for a little bit, but the rain chances aren't looking good, and there could possibly be some severe weather moving in. Next week, we'll begin with those chances of severe weather on Monday and Tuesday, with an 80% chance of rain both days. Monday, it will be 65, rainy and windy, and it will be 59 and rainy on Tuesday. Wednesday will be another chilly day at just 56 degrees, but the sun should be back out by then. At, and Thursday, excuse me, we'll be back up in the 60s. The sun will be out and it will be another pleasant day here in Shawnee. That rain early next week will hopefully just be some extra moisture and a little thunder, nothing extremely severe. But still make sure you're staying informed and staying safe, especially if you're planning to travel. Don't forget that you can be featured on the News 30 broadcast by simply sending us a tweet. Tweet us at, at Shawnee News 30 and use the hashtag Shawnee Fall Fun to let us know how you are having fun this fall season in Shawnee. All in all, it's looking like a nice weekend and then a wet beginning to next week. Back to you, Lindsay. 
Thank you, Kristen. Dr. Kristen Todd, she will never be forgotten. On Sunday, November 15th, 2015, Oklahoma Baptist University is hosting a fundraiser for the Kristen Todd Research and Writing Award at Oklahoma Baptist University. This event will take place at 227 North Union Street in Shawnee, Oklahoma. At 2.30 on Sunday, a silent auction and a reception will be held to be followed by a concert. It will be an afternoon of art, music, and poetry. Google has a new idea to keep email new and exciting. Google Smart Reply. Google Smart Reply will be able to read through your emails and give you recommended responses to help make the email reply process faster and easier. AMC theaters across the nation are gearing up for the new Star Wars release, but not how you would expect. The theater company has released that Star Wars mask and blasters will not be allowed at the premiere or any showing after. These new rules have been made to keep all moviegoers feeling comfortable and safe. Shawnee fans who are planning to see Star Wars The Force Awakens at Penn Square Mall AMC will have to leave their blasters at home or they will be forced out of the theater. The Shawnee community is using art to help fight hunger. This month, the Maybe Gare Museum at St. Gregory's University and the Salvation Army are partnering with Oklahoma artists to raise awareness and funds for the hungry. The museum is hosting a display of art centering around the theme. Visitors can receive free admission by, donating, it, by no, donating, excuse me, a non-perishable food item to help needy families during the holiday season. The display will be up through November 22nd. On November 21st and 22nd, C-SPAN will be broadcasting the Miami, Florida Book Fair. The live broadcast will begin at 9 a.m. on the 21st and last throughout the next day. Be sure to tune in and catch interviews with authors like Peggy Noonan, Ted Kopel, Leonard Pitch Jr., P.J. O'Rourke, and more. After the break, Jermaine Tucker has this week's sports. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 30. Here's News 30's own Jermaine Tucker with this week's sports. Thank you, Jake. In MLB news, Tommy Hansen, once considered one of Atlanta Braves' top pitching prospects before a shoulder injury and a concussion derailed his career, died Monday at an Atlanta hospital. He was only 29 years old. Hansen suffered for, from a catastrophic organ failure after being rushed to the hospital early Sunday morning after he had trouble breathing. He then lapsed into a coma. Hansen, a right-hander, pitched five MLB seasons after being taken in the tw overall 22nd round of the 2005 Amateur Draft. He went 11-4 with an ERA of 2.8 in his rookie season with the Braves in 2009, and he finished third in NL Rookie of the Year voting. Hansen finished his career with a total of 49 wins and 35 loss record and an ERA of 3.8. Major League seasons, the last being spent with the Los Angeles Angels. Excuse me. In the ML, MA, NBA news, excuse me, Kevin Durant injured his hamstring as he drove toward the basket late in the first half of Tuesday night's game against the Washington Wizards. After Durant left at halftime, Thunder teammate Russell Westbrook took over, compiling a triple-double with 22 points, 11 assists, and 11 rebounds to lead Oklahoma City to a 125 to 101 victory over the struggling Washington Wizards. Durant missed most of last season with a broken right foot that needed three operations. In that absence, Westbrook emerged as the league's scoring champion. A similar scenario played out Tuesday night as Westbrook scored 10 points with five assists and three rebounds in the third quarter alone to help build a comfortable lead for the Thunder. Westbrook dominated for stretchers of the third quarter as Oklahoma City used an early 16-8 run to go ahead 84-58 in the third, its biggest margin of the game. With Durant scheduled to be out for the next 10 days, the Thunder will look to Westbrook to guide the team till Durant's return. The popular world sport of rugby has found a home in the football crazed United States. Beginning in April, the high-intensity sport will get its own professional league. The league will start off small, featuring just six teams hosted in major metropolitan areas in the Northeast, the Rocky Mountains, and California. 
In, in 2017, the league plans to add more teams, including some in Canada. Venues and other details won't be released until next week. The rugby union may still very much be a niche sport in the United States, but has seen a growing audience in the past few years. In October, October of 2014, excuse me, an international match between the USA Eagles and top-ranked New Zealand sold out Chicago's Soldier Field, which is the home of the Chicago Bears. The pro rugby's first season will run from April through July, with each team playing 10 games in what is being called medium-sized venues. This will allow fans to connect with their teams and build a sense of camaraderie excuse me, and loyalty that the game is associated with. In local news, the Shawnee swim team swept the podium at Moore Tuesday, where the first place team finishes on the boys and girls side in the second meet of the season. The Lady Wolves dominated the competition and finished with 830 points well ahead of Westmore, who finished in second place with 414 points. The boys also won a hard-fought battle against Southmore, winning with a score of 299 points to Southmore's 244 points. The Wolves had multiple third-place finishes to add valuable points and were helped along by Will Gibson's solo performance in the 500 free competition, which added 20 points to the boys' overall score. Well, that's it for this week's Sports Blitz. Back to you, Lindsay. Thank you, Jermaine. You loved the story Finding Nemo, and now, after 12 years, Pixar has made a sequel, Finding Dory. The first official trailer was released two days ago, and from the looks of it, a few of your favorite characters will be returning. <laughs> the release of date for Finding Dory so far is set for June of 2016. Oh. And let me tell you, that date could not come soon enough. You know I'm going to see it. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching tonight. And be sure to join us next week for our last show of the semester. So come st stay tuned and have a good night.